We are so grateful, Lord. We come this morning to cast our crowns at your feet. The crowns are those things we have attained, we have achieved for ourselves. We shall exchange the perishable crowns for the unperishable crowns. And I trust God today in Jesus' name that in this week, it will be a week of resolution to serve God and to target to make heaven so that this reward and these crowns can become our portions as we become partakers of this grace in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we give God praise in Jesus' name. And so somebody give God praise. Praise God. Hallelujah. I will give him praise and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. There are five imperishable crowns that are mentioned in the New Testament that will be awarded to believers. And they are the crown of glory, the crown of life, the crown of rejoicing, the crown of righteousness. I believe God today, and then the crown of incorruptible the crown of incorruptible five crowns the question this morning is what are these crowns meant for what do we need these crowns what are they for are we seeking to obtain these crowns so that when we get to heaven I'll be wearing five crowns on my head no but the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation chapter 4 from verse 10. Revelation chapter 4 from verse 10. The 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, Verse 11. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For you created all things, and your will, they exist, and we are created. Hallelujah, somebody. Revelation chapter 4, verse 10. And the Bible says, that they cast their crowns before the throne. If you were to be or you find yourself in heaven, seated among the elders, what crown will you cast? Will you have any crown at all? Will you even make heaven in the first place? This is the question for this morning to be answered. Because surely, we are all going to be requested if we have to come to heaven to come along with these crowns. And these crowns must be presented. And out of these five crowns, the first one we'll talk about is the imperishable crown. The imperishable crown. First Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 24 to 25. The imperishable crown. The Bible tells us about it to us. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. Do you not know that those who run a race all run but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain that prize. Verse 25. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown. But we for an imperishable 
around. So while on this earth we make all manners of effort, make all manners of what? Effort here to make ends meet. We compete in school to gain admission. We compete in the office to gain promotion. We compete to marry. We compete to be the one that will be chosen as a bride. And at the end, whether you get a ring or you get a certificate or you get a promotion package, all of them remain what? Perishable. Even if you run and you are 10 times Olympic winner, where is Muhammad Ali? If you sing and you become famous and the whole world celebrates you, where is Michael Jackson? Many of these most popular and famous men at their last days could not sleep. They had no peace despite all their fame. That is to say that most of the perishable crowns, even those who had them, we are not satisfied. Many of them died in ministry. Today, we don't even know whether they can account for their soul. And so, why would a man strive and spend their whole life to obtain the crown that will perish and neglect the little effort and demand that is placed on you so that this imperishable crown can become your portion? I would want to pray for myself this morning. You also could pray for yourself. Ask God, bring it to pass in my life today that this revelation will bring me into a revelation that all the things on this earth are subject to decay and we perish. All the things in this world are subject to decay and we perish. But yet there remains as I live, an opportunity to labor for that which will not perish, that is eternal and heavenly. Give me understanding and revelation that I begin to treasure this imperishable ground that is uncorruptible. And I can strive for it in exchange for all my heart desire and my loss over the worldly things. Matthew chapter 6 verse 19 explains to us why this is important that every believer should understand this and this is what he had to say Matthew chapter 6 verse 19 he says do not lay up for yourself treasures on the earth what are these treasures the treasures are these awards these perishable crowns six masters, ten PhDs, and no time to pray. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth. I'm not saying you shouldn't do well in school. I'm not saying you shouldn't have ambition. But avoid excessive ambition. Avoid tormenting your soul in exchange for material things. Avoid being too engaged in worldly things that you don't make any allowance or provision for things that have eternal. For the Bible says that do not lay yourself up for these treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Thieves, they break in and they steal the material things. They can steal them. But there are things that can never be stolen from you. Think about it. Think about those things that can never be lost. Think about the crown that when you receive, that crown will take you to eternity. And I would therefore say that we need to be faithful and run our race with endurance, knowing that there is an incorruptible inheritance that is undefiled and does not fade away that is reserved for everyone in heaven. First Peter chapter 1 from verse 4. I desire this crown. I don't know who else desires this crown. I'm 
talking about this crown, I want you to start desiring it. York. The Bible said, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that those and does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Say to your neighbor, there is an inheritance that is incorruptible and that is undefiled and does not fade away that is reserved in heaven for you. That is reserved in heaven for me. Encourage your neighbor and say to him or her, Seek those things that cannot be corrupted. Seek those things that cannot be defiled. Seek those things that cannot be stolen. Seek those things that does not fade away. Fame will fade away. And on that grounds today, I will have this to say to us. Seeing that all these things, glamour, beauty, figure, shape, certificate, and all these things, that they level for. The Bible says they are corruptible, they will fade away, and there's something reserved for me in heaven. That which he has reserved for me in heaven, I need to level for it. I need to work hard to have it. Just like we are told here, that we should run this race in such a way that we shall do what qualify. What are the things that will make you disqualified? What are the things that will stop you from receiving this crown? Those are the things today that as we move into this week, be conscious of them. If I have my decisions and I want to say the same thing to you, everything that you have come in touch with or in contact with or person make a call to them if it's something you need to rectify if it's something you need to avoid take it out of your life don't allow anything that is corrupt or you are not sure to be a part of whatever that is in your life by bringing in what is corruptible and defiled what have you done you are also defiling yourself and if you want to have this incorruptible and undefiled gift, what must you do? You must don't have a choice. You must make sure that if you are in doubt, what you are not sure of, give it away. You had a boyfriend and he bought you a car, gave you phones, and you said that you are now a new creation. All things are passing away. Give him back his car. Give him back his phone. Don't keep the things that your sugar daddy gave you. Return them back to him. That way, you will be free and you can pursue your incorruptible crown and whatever you have is defined. I pray that God will cause this what you are hearing this morning without us struggling over it to convict you of sin. Are there things you have acquired you on, on on, on due uh, on righteous means. I pray that God will cause you to cast them out in the name of our Lord Jesus. Another way to say is to do what? To return them. To return them to where they came from and keep yourself clean and keep yourself free and pure from corruption in Jesus' name. Pray with me. Say, Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus. Lead me, in, lead me not into temptation and deliver me from all evil. The next crown after that is the crown of righteousness. The crown of right, the, the crown of righteousness. After the, the perishable crown, let's look at the crown of righteousness. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. The crown of righteousness. The crown of righteousness. Who is interested in this crown of righteousness? And who are this crown meant for? 
a crown of righteousness. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. Let's start from verse 6. Second Timothy, let's start from verse 6. And here Paul said, For I am already called out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. Verse 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. And I have kept the faith. Verse 8. And this is what he now cries. He says, Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. You know, every time we talk about his appearing, I get excited. Do you think that not do you think everybody is excited about the second coming of Jesus? Some don't even expect him, and some don't know he will come. But as you are crying out Maranatha, as you're expecting him, you are being enlisted among those who will receive this crown of what? You know, the crown of glory is another crown. The crown of life is another crown. The crown of rejoicing is another crown. These are three other crowns. I want to rush it. You know, why some of us are not really aware of what we're expecting and what we're going to receive? It's because we have not been taught. And why we don't know what we're expecting, we're not excited about heaven. Now, if you really know that, hey, I need this crown to cast at the master's feet. Revelation chapter 4 verse 10. I've already told you that for you to get this incorruptible crown, then you must have to fight everything that is defiling and perishing and corrupting that is trying to take you out of glory. So while you struggle to keep yourself clean and pure and keep yourself away from this, you automatically are walking closer to being able to be endowed with this crown. That's the first one. Are you following me now? Are you now waking up to it? So you get the incorruptible what? Crown. Which is going to be given to people who have endeavored, endured, and have successfully have succeeded as they live their life to keep themselves clean from corruption. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Through running their race, like I have taught you now, you run your race in such a way that you know that you will receive this crown. Run it like somebody who is expecting a crown. So that is the way you run, the way you live. You know, um, can you imagine people who are running, can you imagine? You know, they draw lines. I have to run your lane. There are things that if you do, you'll be disqualified. Not so. Very good. So, while we are living our life, we are running our race. This morning, you are going to run another race. And as you run your race today, is God qualifying you? Because you you rather be qualified on day-to-day -day basis. Remember, I've gone back to explain crown one now. Because I've seen that you are waking up to what I'm saying. I'm talking about crown two, and he's telling me about crown of glory. Do you understand me? So I'm going back to crown one. Crown what? One. My desire is that when I'm through with this teaching, every one of you will be seeing the crown and you'll be desiring it. Because you know, if there's something you are working towards, you will actually get it. But many people are like, well, go to heaven, go to, go to heaven and do what? What are you coming there for? The Bible said, the elders, day and night, they cast those crowns. So what, what will you be doing when others are casting ground? You have nothing to cast. Some of us are saying, no problem. Just take me to heaven. At least even if I'm a get man in heaven, I'm okay. Just make sure I don't enter her fire. All I need is God. Just keep me, even if it's outside the gate of heaven. Just keep me on the road, self. Let me not even enter anywhere. Not even give me mansion. But let me escape hell. You know the danger. People who don't want to come last. Okay? They don't want to come first. All they want to do is pass. Such people always fail. Because they don't read at all. But you see, if you come to the league of those who want to come first dead, that's where they work hard. Those are the people who get what? 
medals. And I believe God that those of us that have to make careful has to be diligent like those who want to get this crown. So there's kind of a consciousness I need to have this imperishable, incorruptible crown. I want it. So what happens? I wake up in the morning. The way I'm going to live my life, I will run my own lane with fear of being disqualified. What makes me disqualified as I run it? The rules are there. You know what you should not do. You know what you should do. If every day you run your race of everyday life and you get disqualified, what are you expecting somewhere along the line? Ha. You are going to fall out now. You will fail out. You do what? You fail out. It's like in a school, they keep giving you exam, exam, exam. They keep failing all your midterm, midterm, midterm exams. And already 40% you have failed. You got how many? You know this type of zero? That they will put here, put here, eyes, eyes inside it and mouth. When you fail and fail very well. Or somebody who doesn't come to class, who doesn't read anything. And people who are living their life like that. If they bring out our score sheet now, it will shock you. I'm telling you how I pray that God will let some of us see our score sheet on a daily basis. Because that is what is going to determine the final race. Before the judgment, which God himself will put all of them together from the day we are called and the day that he took our score. And then he now decides, is he qualified or not qualified? I believe there are angels who are examiners and they have a big massive record room where they are keeping our report sheets. The hour of judgment, you go there and they will just start bringing it out. By the time you start arguing, they'll just be showing you a chart. They'll be showing you the chart. They'll be showing you your card. That thing you saw and you felt nobody knew you did it. They will mark it for you. Do you remember on the 21st day of the month of September 2020 and we are being taught about the crown of incorruption? You say yes. Now, did you know that exactly 10 o'clock after that, that same day, not another day, you now made a call to somebody to go and put a bribe so they can make a transfer and a change in your office. You'll be looking. No, no. The question was this. You mean you did such a thing? Because the message did not profit you. So it didn't touch your conscience. What you heard did not change anything. You just continued their life as if it was nothing. You went to the office and you still continued their old practices. Hmm. That time there will be no sir, please, I'm sorry. Nobody will listen. Nobody will listen. You saw the, the examination will be all about, we are sorry. This crown, we are not giving it out because you did not qualify. That's how people start failing. You know. They are not going to fail but go to hell. No. They will bring crown two. They bring crown what? Okay. By the time you fail that crown one, crown two will come. You'll be looking at your crown. Your own crown. Hoping that you will collect it. Okay. Now, the crown of righteousness. Let's try him and see whether he can receive that. Now, the Bible says, finally, there's laid up for me Say, it is laid up for me. It is already in heaven laid up. As God open my eyes, let me see that crown. Kai. If you see it, you will focus. If you see the crown, you do what? Focus. It's already there. It's laid up for me. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, is the one that will judge it all. We give to me on that day. <laughs> Are you thinking of that day? I, is your mind crossing it that the God of all judge has something to give you on the day of judgment judgment is not only going to hell or entering heaven no, that day there will be crowns that are waiting for you to receive or it will be taken away from you cry out say father open my eyes and my mind and my spirit to recognize and realize that this crown of righteousness, my own crown, that has been laid up for me by the Lord God that is the 
judge of righteousness that this crown will not pass me by. It will not pass me by. It will not pass me by. I pray God that I will understand the revelation that as I live my life and I keep waiting for your appearing, living like one who is waiting for you to come, like you are bright, like a wise virgin, like a steward that is accountable, living my life in righteousness through Christ Jesus on a daily basis, expectant for your appearing every minute, that I will live ready and prepared to receive this crown of righteousness in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we cry out, we pray, we ask you this morning, Lord, extend to us the grace, the grace to reach out to receive this crown. I don't want to struggle. You can't get this by your strength. I can't say let's work hard for it. This will not be given by human level. As God today, give us the grace. Help us to align with your spirit. Help us this day, Lord, to live with the fear of God. Let us not live our life as though there is no day of judgment. As though that heaven is not real. As though there is nothing to live for. Yes. If people know there is something to live for, people will not go to commit suicide. A person that committed suicide did that because he doesn't know that there is something that is there waiting for him. That there is life after here. He committed suicide because he thinks he will die. And his trouble will expire. No. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 14 from verse 1. In the lost world, people don't care. They don't fear God. They live as though there's nothing to live for. And Satan has blinded many people. But in John chapter 14 verse 1, the Bible says, John chapter 14 verse 1, 14 verse 1, let your heart, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Verse 2, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. Verse 3. I'll go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you to myself. And where I am, dear you may be also. Verse 4. And where I go, you know. And the way you know. Verse 5. Thomas said to him, Lord, do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? You know, this is Thomas. You know, Thomas is the one that will always doubt. When you are trying to make sense, he will just be saying something that will show you that his mind is not in what you say. I believe there is nobody who is doubting the word of God this morning. Is there somebody that is asking questions that is out of place? Jesus now said, and it's clear, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Do you want a crown of righteousness? He is the way. Do you want to receive the crown of righteousness? He is the truth. Do you want to have the crown of righteousness? Is the source of life that will give it to him who desires it. And I believe so strongly today that whoever mentions the name of the Lord should depart from iniquity. Whatever your conscience convicts you of, stop it. If you continue disobeying God and your conscience, surely you will perish. You will. Because it's your conscience that will judge you. If your conscience is dead, these are people that have been taken over by the sons of perdition. 
And so you must keep obeying God to keep your conscience alive. And without a conscience that is alive, you cannot guarantee that at least I'm discussing two out of the five crowns, that these crowns will be able to walk towards them. Cry out this morning, say, Father, keep my conscience alive. Cause me to be alert. Make me, Lord, to receive what you have laid up for me to your glory. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.